All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate two new features in Waveform 12. One of them is the new AB switch, which allows you to choose two different paths within a rack environment. And then also the mono switch, which is also really useful in racks, but you can also use it in the main master area if you want to test your mix in mono. And it has a variety of cool features, which I'll show you in a bit. Along the way, I'm going to show you a few other features that are new as well. But first of all, let's get started with the AV switch. I put together this little demo project, sounds like this right now. All right, let's take a look at this piano part. Right now I have no effects on that. I am playing MIDI through the new Rompler. This is a new instrument that gives you some basic bread and butter sounds, super easy to use. We've got it loaded to this YPD Grand Piano sound. Now we're gonna run that through some effects, which I've set up in a rack. So here's the rack setup, and you'll see right away, we come in from the piano track directly to the new AB switch. I'm gonna click on that, and this is the user interface for the AB switch. Basically, you can choose between A and B paths and there's stereo paths. So I'm coming in here to the input and then go out. Here is A left and A right, B left and B right. So what I've got it set up to do is when this is enabled, I can go through this path, which is a phaser plus the new chorus, or I can go into the new natural reverb as an alternative. Now the reason you might set up something like this is so you could automate the switching of two different paths of effects within a rack. So I'm gonna go back to the rack here, right click and enable it. And now you're gonna hear, that's path A, that's the phaser. So that's how that sounds. If we take a look at the chorus, we're going through the new chorus. I did a whole video on this chorus, but one thing that we can do to make that sound more dramatic is to go to the wide sound. Pretty cool right away. So then we'll go back to the AB switch. And I'll show you while playing back, just basically I'll switch between these two paths. Now, one thing I wanted to show you is that you can easily also add this to the faceplate interface on here. So if we choose the rack and then go to faceplate, you may never have looked at this before, but it allows you to add some kind of a switch. So you can go over here on the right, unlock it, we'll expand that grid. Ah, oh, we'll just leave the grid like this. And then we'll just draw in an area where we're going to put in some kind of a control. And we're going to make it, I think I'll just make it a slider. And we'll set the skin to Juno. That looks like a knob style linear vertical like this. So now we have our basic slider here. And then we're going to assign a parameter. Now for the parameter, we'll go to the AP switch and assign the mode to that. And then we'll turn that off. And now we've got this that we can use to switch back and forth between these two effects paths. It's really just a switch. So if you're about 50% in here, it will switch between those two things. I just thought that was kind of cool just to remind you that the rack faceplates do exist if you're in the pro version of Waveform. 
So let's close that for now and take a look at the new mono switch. To do that, we're going to solo the drum line here and open the mono switch so you can see the, the user interface for this. Let me explain. Right now it's off. At the most basic level, you can use this to test something in mono or just to quickly switch it from stereo to mono. And you do that by clicking the mono button. So that's the way you engage it. You'll also notice that there is a mode, and this mode is really cool because it does minus 6 dB. When you fold the left and right to mono, you often get a level bump. So if you want to be able to go to mono without getting the volume, the apparent volume going up, then it's common to go to mono and then reduce by 6 dB, which is what we're doing here. So you don't hear a substantial change in volume. And you have some other options here. You can do 3 dB. Let's just do 0 dB, which means it doesn't do any correction for the change in volume. And you can hear right away that it sounds louder when you go to mono. And you also have a minus 3 dB, which gives you a little bit of correction, but it will still go up a little bit. Or you could just choose the left side. When you go to mono, Just this will be only the left side or only the right side. This works great if you put it in the master section to do all of your testing. If you want to check your mix in mono, just put this right down here in the master section and you can just basically click this button. You can also swap the left and right channels, the left and right sides to see how that sounds. In this particular case, because I've got it going through a beat sync delay plugin, you can hear the effect that the delays change sides. So you have one delay on one side and one on the other, and so you, you pick up the other one. So that just swaps the left and right sides. You could also reverse the polarity of the left or right side. This gives you a really quick way to check polarity. It's a great utility plugin. Because the polarity is correct, it sounds weird when you do that. That is the new mono switch plugin. One other thing I wanted to show you when I was putting this together is the new strum style editing that you can do in the MIDI editor. So to do that, I'm going to double click on this little MIDI file. And you can see that it rolls in on this piano part. Actually, I'll turn the effects off and then you can see it here where there's a little bit of a, you know, roll in on this. So I'm going to just demonstrate that now you just select whatever notes you want in the MIDI editor. And if you hold down command as you drag the start of this note, you'll see that it creates a strum effect where it offsets these notes in kind of a stepped fashion. So I'll do it a little more dramatically than you would normally do here. And let's do it on the second one as well. You could already hear that. So I'll hold down command. This would be control on a PC. And you'll get this rolling effect, which would sound like a strum if you're on a guitar type part. This one right here doesn't do it.
So I, that's a pretty cool editing capability. We are using the rompler also for the bass part. That is bass clean, which is a, a really useful thing. And to get that pattern, you can see it, it's only quarter notes on the actual MIDI part here. To get that pattern, I'm using the note repeater. The note repeater has been in here for some time. And it's just something that is easy to forget that it's there. But basically, it just breaks up your note into a sequence, which you can load here. And I just thought it was interesting that just an interesting way to get a repeating part on your bass line. We're actually two more new features I'm using on this track. This one is the DJ filter I'm using to get a lo-fi drum part. Great for adding lo-fi or adding a filtered sweep. I keep finding uses, it looks so simple, but uh, play around with this one, the DJ filter. And then I did another video on the delay already, and we're using the preset beat sync stereo echo on the drum part here. So that's how we're getting that sound off of a, a really standard type of, a, almost like a neo soul type drum beat. Let me just disable these and you can hear. And this is also the, the compressor. So it's going into the compressor to give it a little bit of life as well. So I'm going to disable all the effects. And one more little thing, I'll bring back a little arpeggio track here that I put together. Also going into the Rompler, the nonlinear reverb, and the MIDI arpeggiator, and it sounds like this. I guess I used the delay on that as well. So those are several new features, but the main focus of this video was to show you the new mono switch as well as the new AB switch, which will be really helpful for those of you who work in the rack environment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.